Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes the star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the famous Victor Herbert operetta, Mademoiselle Maudit, starring Gordon McRae and his lovely guest, Jane Powell. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. Now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In Victor Herbert's Mademoiselle Modiste, I play the part of an American student in Paris who falls in love with Fifi, the charming Mademoiselle Modiste who sells women's hats. And here is our Mademoiselle Modiste tonight is a Fifi we all take our hats off to, the lovely singing star of the films, Jane Powell. Star tap, ball hat, flat and very tall hat, play a part in history for good or ill. No, perhaps may make a man, but since first the world began, hats have made a woman. Lovely, my little Mademoiselle Modiste. She worked in one of the most fashionable hat shops in Paris. And whenever I was able to take time for my studies, I used to hurry to the shop to try and get a glimpse of her. This had to be done in the greatest secrecy, because a great uncle of mine had promised my mother to keep an eye on me while I was studying in Paris. And his idea of keeping an eye on me was to keep me away from every pretty Mademoiselle in the city. The hat shop was owned by a Madame Cecile, and one day, when I dropped by the shop with some flowers for Fifi, Madame Cecile said to me, Oh, Robert, you're a nice boy, but you must not permit yourself to get too attached to Fifi. After all, she is a businesswoman, and nothing will ever matter to Fifi as much as her career. Are you sure, Madame Cecile? After all, I wouldn't think a girl would want to spend all of her life in a hat shop. I have spent all of my life in a hat shop. Someday, Fifi will be just like me. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. Well, madame, I see Fifi in a small house, cooking and sewing and, and singing to little girls who look just like her. Oh, dear. You are too young to be thinking of things like that. You should be free to do as you like. Well, that's always been my philosophy. <laughs> Fills my soul with delight On the morrow may seem to me vile There's no worldly pleasure myself I deny There's no one to ask me the wherefore I eat when I'm hungry And drink when I'm dry For
I left the shop that day without seeing Fifi. I didn't know until a long time later that my great uncle, the Count, came to the shop after I left and waited to see her. He was determined to fix things so that I would never see Fifi again. Good afternoon, Your Lordship. Madame Cecile said you wanted to see me. How can I serve you? Well, what is a charming girl like you doing in a place like this? I sell hats, monsieur. May I show you some? Well, suppose I ask you to model one and come to tea with me. Uh, what would you say to that, eh? I cannot leave the shop during working hours, monsieur. Ah, well, how about after working hours? I have an engagement after working hours. With the gentleman? Oh, oui, monsieur. Oh, he must be a very attractive gentleman. So, uh, monsieur, if you aren't interested in any hats, I must ask you to excuse me. Oh, I'm very interested in hats. Uh, show me something that an attractive young girl might enjoy wearing in the morning. Oh, oui, monsieur. Uh, what is a young lady's complexion? Very like yours. Oh? Well, then, how about this model? Oh, that's enchanting. I'll take it. Uh, now, about this gentleman you meet after work. Is he a young American who... Oh, no, monsieur. He is an old Frenchman. Uh, how does this model strike you? Well, it's German. An old Frenchman? You are in love with an old Frenchman? In love? <laughs> oh, no, monsieur. He is my music teacher. Oh, your music teacher. But, of course, I'm setting to go on the stage. Not to the setting is ever likely to do me much good, well, but... Well, now, why do you say that? Monsieur, I have neither money nor influence. And without one or the other, I am helpless. Uh, tell me, what sort of roles can you play, Mademoiselle Modi? Any role. <laughs> well, you have self-confidence. I'll say that for you. Monsieur, I will show you that I have more than that. If I were asked to play the part of simple maiden light at heart, a busy class in country clothes, a stupid proper work she goes. I'd sing a merry building strain and gaily dance in his
once my uncle had heard Fifi sing, he decided on a plan. He bought three more hats, and while Fifi was having them wrapped, he slipped $5,000 into an envelope and addressed the envelope to her. When she returned, he said to her, The name of the lady who is to receive the hats is on this envelope. I want you to deliver them to us. Oh, oui, monsieur. Fifi, you're back. I was hoping you'd be... Uncle, what are you doing here? Uncle? Uh, Robert, well, what are you... Good doing? afternoon, Robert. I must say I am surprised and shocked after I expressly forbade you to come here again. I'm not a child, Uncle, and you're not going to tell me where I'm to go and who I'm to see. What is going on out here? What is all the commotion? Uh, Madam Cecile, I love Fifi, and I want to marry her and take her away from here. You want to take her away? Robert, you will cease your attentions to this young woman at once. Or I will stop your allowance and cut you out of my will forever. Mademoiselle Maurice, you will have nothing to gain by trapping my nephew into this disgraceful alliance. He is not going to trap your nephew into anything. He is going to stay right here with me. Where will I find another Maurice like her? I Fifi, tell you, I will me. not oh, have it. No, 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 I can't stand anymore. I can't stand anymore. Fifi, come with me. No, Robert. Monsieur Le Comte, I will not marry your nephew. You need not worry. I know that you can never marry a Maurice. So there is nothing for me to do but to go away. Where will you go? I will deliver these hats for the Comte. And I will not be back. I think you are making a wise decision, Mademoiselle Marie. You'll find the address on the envelope. And uh, I hope you attain your goal and become a great singer. Please, you can't leave me like this. You can. I love you. I'm sorry, Robert. I'm afraid there's no other way. Oh, last to part, how great the sorrow. To leave a friend grown fond with years. To know perchance that on the morrow. For love and smile from doubts and Turn to the second act of Mademoiselle Modiste in just a moment. But first, today the American people have a wider choice of a greater variety of necessities, conveniences, and luxuries than any other people have ever enjoyed. One of the important reasons for this is the American system of transportation. The backbone of that system is the great workhorse of American life, the railroad. Of course, we have other forms of transportation on land and water and in the air. But it is the fundamental service of railroads which makes possible the modern highway and the motor cars which use it, and also makes possible all the other newer ways of transport. Each one of these other forms of transportation is widely used, but no one of them, nor all of them together, can do for this country what is done day in and day out by its railroads. 
Only the railroads can and do handle anything movable, anywhere, at any time, in any quantity, and for anyone. They keep the products of our farms, forests, and mines moving to industrial plants and carry back the finished goods which our people use and enjoy in such abundance. Like most industries, the railroads operate most efficiently and most economically when they operate most nearly to capacity. So the more freight that is shipped by rail, the more passengers who ride the train, the better able will the railroads be to handle your business and meet the nation's needs in commerce and defense. That's why it's good business to do business with the railroad. And now, here is the second act of Mademoiselle Maudit, starring Gordon McRae and his lovely guest, Jane Powell. <laughs> my little Mademoiselle Maudice. The days, the months went by. And then a year. Two years. I tried to tell myself I didn't care, but it wouldn't work. I saw her face everywhere. Yet I could never find her. I wonder if Cupid is silly or stupid or if the little rascal cannot see. For loving and wooing are all of his doing, and yet he makes it painful as can be. He mixes the stations, he changes relations, for all your little schemes he sets a snare. And though you have planned it and both understand it, he'll fix it so your sweetheart is not there. That she'll be there without any figure out how Fifi could have disappeared so completely. I didn't know she had become a famous singer under the name of Madame Bellini, and that she had come to see my uncle. I have come to repay a debt, monsieur. In this envelope, with your name on the outside, you will find the money that you so generously loaned me. Oh, and did you go on the stage? Oh, but yes. Didn't you know? As a matter of fact, I'm singing tomorrow night at the Charity Bazaar. I am Madame Bellini. Singing at the Charity Bazaar? My Charity Bazaar? Oui, monsieur. Is this some trick of yours to see Robert? Will he be there? Now, see here, you ought to have nothing to do with Robert. I am no longer a modiste, monsieur. My dear girl, Robert can marry only a woman of birth and education. Someone who is of my station in life. <laughs> oh, he could hardly marry you, monsieur. <laughs> well, this is no occasion for levity. I absolutely forbid you to make any appearance at the Charity Bazaar. Very well, monsieur but I think you are a selfish old aristocrat without a kind, charitable thought in your heart. You can keep your precious nephew. 
I wouldn't dream of marrying him. <laughs> But Fifi did come to the charity bazaar. She came dressed as a fortune teller, and I went to her to have my fortune told. She wore a mask, and of course I had no idea who she was. What kind of fortune would you like, monsieur? Well, what kind have you? <laughs> Let me see your palm, and I'll tell you. Oh, dear. I see blonde, neck, and pretty. Oh, no, not in my palm, mademoiselle. I have only loved one woman, and she... Yes? She's forgotten me. Monsieur, I see a great surprise in store for you. You're going to meet someone that you haven't seen for two whole years. Really? Someone who loves you devotedly. A singer. Oh, dear. There's someone who hates you. My uncle. He's trying to keep you apart. He wants you to marry a title. No. No. I'll marry Mademoiselle Modiste or no one. Through all the long, weary months of the opera, he thought of you. And dreamed of you. And wondered if you still remember. Beefy. Darling, darling, it's you. It's really you. <laughs> yes, Robert. Oh, <laughs> Beefy. <laughs> oh, 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 there are the soldiers. They've made me their mascot, and I promised to sing for them. Oh, I'm coming with you. I'm never going to let you out of my sight again. <laughs> oh, I hope you never do. <laughs> soldiers of France. Soldiers, I am honored to be your mascot. <laughs> I are going to get married, Uncle, and this time no one is going to separate us. Oh, are you prepared to cut yourself off from all your friends as well as your family? I'll have her. You know, Uncle, you really did us a great favor by separating us. You showed us how much it means to be together. <laughs> well, young woman, seems you've won and I have lost. Oh, please, please don't feel that way about it. Share our happiness, will you? Well, there doesn't seem to be anything else to do but swallow my pride. And wish you both happiness and withdrawal. I don't know. I always get so sentimental in the spring. Fifi. Kiss me. Kiss me. Sweet summer breeze. Whispering trees. Sunshine. Oh, <laughs> 
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Jane Fowler will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, this is Gordon McRae giving a big vote of thanks to Verna Felton and Joseph Kearns for their fine performances tonight. Mademoiselle Modiste, with book and lyrics by Henry Blossom and music by Victor Herbert, was adapted for radio by Gene Holloway. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroad. These railroads have many meanings for America, deep and vital meanings. They mean essential, efficient, and economical transportation. They mean jobs, good jobs, not only for railroad men and women, but also for hundreds of thousands of others who make the materials, supplies, and equipment the railroads buy. And railroads mean taxes. Taxes which help pay for the education of your children and for the general public welfare. Yes, day in and day out, railroads play an important part in the growth and progress of your community. And that's why it's good business to do business with the railroads. And now here again is lovely Jane Powell. Ah, Jane, you know it's always a pleasure to have you with us. Oh, for me too, Gordon. I'm really beginning to feel at home around the railroad. Well, you should. You're certainly streamlined enough. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you're no snow afraid either. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we'll be expecting you back week after next again, Janey, for our St. Patrick's Day program, George M. Cohen's Irish musical Little Nellie Kelly. Oh, I'll be here. (laughs) Meanwhile... Be sure to listen next week, Janie, because we're doing Gilbert and Sullivan's HMS Pinafore. Uh-huh. And our guests are going to be Kenny Baker and Lucille Norman. Oh, I won't miss it. Bye, Gordon. Bye, Janie. Oh, boys. Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so, until next week, goodbye. Mademoiselle Modiste was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Jane Powell appeared by arrangement with Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of Key to the City, starring Clark Gable, Loretta Young, Frank Morgan, and Marilyn Maxwell. Gordon McRae appeared by arrangement with Warner Brothers, producers of The Hasty Heart, starring Ronald Reagan, Patricia Neal, and Richard Todd. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. And now keep tuned to your Monday night of music on NBC. Oh.